Welcome back to On the Path. And as you can see, it might be a little bit different. <laughs> I know I'm feeling a little different as now we are on camera to some of you. Lucy, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, I also am feeling a little bit conscious that I'm on camera. I'm going to have to uh, sit up straight and, you know, come presentable now instead of just rocking up in my sweats and hair up and stuff. But I am I very I'm... excited to be on YouTube. I think it's quite a, It's it was like the natural next step that we take. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna have to shave my head before every episode <laughs> now, but I actually didn't today. But just if you don't know what we're talking about, it's because we have joined the 983 family, if you will. And from now on, every episode starting right now will be broadcast on YouTube as well under their Gwent's Finity channel, which is a lot of Witcher based things. But as we tweeted out, put in that other video that we made, everything else is going to stay the same. We're still going to come out generally on Sunday <laughs> evenings, if you will. Uh, although now we actually have kind of deadlines we need to make. So this actually keeps us on top of I release know. dates. I feel a yeah, bit so nervous. So the podcast will come out. <laughs> yeah, the podcast will come out Sunday <laughs> evening on the normal podcatchers, podcasting platforms. And then Mondays at 1 p.m. Eastern time and 5 p.m. Greenwich mean time, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. British time. Yeah, whichever one we're in. 7 <laughs> p.m. Central European summer. Whatever. Okay, I'm going to lose track if I get beyond that. <laughs> But that's when it'll come out on that channel and we will always have a link below. So uh, yeah, if you freaks out there want to see us <laughs> as we do this, now you have that option. I'm excited as well because we're like, we're joining some some big names. So we're going to be on the same channel as Florza, which is our friend Pavel Berger and Flake. They have their podcast on that channel as well. So it's very good company we're in. Yeah, and they also, part of the 983, not on the Gwentfinity, there's a D&D &D game that they've got going. Lost oh, nice. Mine of Philander. Here's the thing. <laughs> I keep wanting to say, I, I thought it was Philander, but I don't think that's what it is. But if I keep going in that path, it's going to be Philanderer. And it's like, well, that's not the right term. I haven't heard that, no. <laughs> you know what a Philander is? No. A Philander, I think, is someone like Dandelion. I think a Philander oh. is someone who's very, yeah, kind of gets out and about, if you will. Oh, not a gigolo. No, I think this is just someone who just sleep. They don't get paid for it. So oh, it's like see. dandelion. Okay. There you go. Look at that segue. Because today uh, we're going to cover a poet under pressure and Siri breakneck speed. There are no Apple reviews to go over, but we did top 80 reviews on Spotify. Very exciting. I think we're at a 4.9 on there. So yes. if you have not rated or reviewed it, uh, try to do that as soon as you can, especially on Spotify. Let's get to 100 because I'm pretty sure that affects if you Google like The Witcher on there. And mm. I don't know if mine is kind of thrown off because of that, but I Googled The Witcher into there and it was like the second or third thing that came up. Nice. Yeah. I always think that like if I go onto my own profile, it will probably be yeah recommended to me mostly because that's what I listen to the most. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I try to... I try to grab people's phones whenever they're not looking and see see if we come up on theirs as well. <laughs> yeah, so please do that. It definitely helps out. And same thing with the video that's going to come out. Yeah. The actual broadcast of this on 983 on Gwentfinity. Even if you're not regularly going to watch it, please, as a service to us and to them, click on it. Let it run all the way through. Let it run in the background. That affects searches and all of that. Comment below. Make it a positive comment. If it's a negative comment, keep it to yourself, <laughs> but a positive comment down there, just, just say like, Hey, look at me. I am commenting on the YouTube video. Whatever. Yeah. Just put that down there. It really helps. That's going to help everyone in that sense. So please do that as a small service to us. This will serve as a blanket spoiler warning. We're not going to spoil anything too big from books or everything else, but because this takes place towards the very end, anything mentioned in the game, anything from previous games, all that is on the table and available. So before we get started, the last bit of important information, we both made some tea before we started. <laughs> what kind did you make? Uh, Yorkshire tea with a wee, probably like half a teaspoon of sugar and oat milk. So it comes out a really rare color. So you might, you might catch that. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the oat milk doesn't like give it much color. Whereas like if you use normal milk, it makes it much creamier looking. So that's the first thing that people always say when I'm like drinking tea on stream. They're like, what are you drinking? And they call it like dragon blood, dragon soup, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tomato soup. <laughs> 
it looks very pumpkin-y. So yeah, I'll yeah. need that recipe come Halloween. Why, what I do just you have? Went, I just went with a vanilla white tea. Oh. I heard white tea nice. was better for your teeth. Possibly, yeah. I am yeah. getting quite conscious of my teeth recently because uh, I had braces when I was younger, but I'm conscious now of drinking too much coffee and they're getting like not as white as they used to be. I always take a swig of water after I generally drink coffee and then eat as well as sugar-free gum. That's always yeah. helped. And dentists told me it helps. So, hey, I heard why that not cheese helps. That? Really? I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that if you have a little chunk of cheese, it cleans your teeth. Interesting. It might not be okay. true. Don't please don't quote me on it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just stick with the gum uh, for now. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and get started today with a poet under pressure. Geralt, must you ruin everything? I had him just where I wanted him. Ah, uh, <laughs> it is good to see you, friend. Been a while since you were last in Novigrad. What's... Come on, we'll talk outside. Yeah, so A Poet Under Pressure. This is actually, I didn't realize, but this is the conclusion of the main quest in Novigrad. And it's where we eventually reunite with Dandelion and learn a little bit about Ciri's story with him. Uh, so previously, after the play that we put on and we discussed in the last episode, uh, we send Dudu off in his Menga form. He's now impersonating Menga, who we killed a few episodes ago. And we send him off to Temple Isle to give the order to move Dandelion. And Zoltan heads off to assemble his crew, and they're going to lay an ambush that will intercept the convoy in the ravine to rescue Dandelion. So we've got a plan, and it's going to go. It's going to go swimmingly. So part one of the quest is to go meet Zoltan. But firstly, uh, it's an optional uh, extra. You can go and have a chat with Dijkstra um, if you helped him in Count Reuven's treasure. So you can visit him at the bathhouse, have a chat, and he will agree to send off a group of his men to assist in the ambush. Uh, but like I said, it is optional. You don't have to do that. But we love Dijkstra, so why wouldn't you go and see Dijkstra? Ultimately, we don't even stay to fight them. Yeah, well, yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, so this was really, like, meaningless. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess it helped Zoltan. Yeah. Um, so we travel out of the city past the seven cats in, or the two cats in, if you are like me and had a bit of an ard incident outside the seven cats in. <laughs> okay, so you had an ard incident. I had an igni incident. Oh, no, that's worse. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, just as soon as you hit it, you just... <laughs> I know. And I then was the like, kitties just go down, and I'm like, well, that's a reload. I didn't even know you could do that. I just hit Ard, and you know, when he hits the ground with Ard, all the cats around him just dropped. And I just immediately was like, what have I done? I killed oh, cats. Yeah. I would never kill cats. Uh, oh, no, dogs. I, I mean, the, the dogs in this game. Well, you can, the wolf, well, I guess you can't the kill wolves. what would be, well, there's feral dogs. Yes. I guess you can't kill what would be domesticated dogs. In the Witcher universe, but cats, oh, and then the, oh God, no, no, that's an instant reload. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so past that uh, tavern anyway, and we meet Zoltan in the ravine, and this is the site of the planned ambush. Uh, we have a quick chat with Zoltan. He thinks it would be easier to just send Dudu Menga to simply release Dandelion and be done with it uh, rather than the ambush. And you can kind of make a decision what you want to say here. But Geralt basically says that would be too suspicious. You know, you can't just have him go missing, then rock up and suddenly start releasing prisoners, which, uh, makes sense, I guess. It does, but I don't know that it, I guess it does. Cause that's right. Last part. I keep forgetting that with Triss, we burned to the ground. Those yeah. temple quarters killed everybody there. Mm -hmm. And now Meng is missing. So yeah, he does show back up. But he's also Menga and he's yeah. completely feared and he can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, I do feel like it would take a lot for people to start questioning whether or not he was real. Yeah, or... and they, they said the scar on his eye, that, 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 like that would be hard to explain. Bro, the whole place got burned down yeah. and a witcher <laughs> and a sorceress came and did it. Take a wild guess how I got this scar. Mm -hmm. In oh, the that was, my, was, that, was that my Joker thing right there? <laughs> guess how I got these scars? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Manga Joker. Ooh. That could be a good little side quest. Yeah, that now maybe not. Mm, we'll see. We'll leave that on the cutting room floor. <laughs> um, so Priscilla arrives and she's got a note from Dudu, and the convoy is gonna leave at dawn. 
Uh, Priscilla wants to stay with Geralt and Zoltan as she's sick of sitting around at home waiting and worrying. And you can sort of see in her eyes, she's a wee bit weepy. Um, and even Zoltan kind of makes uh, uh, mentions to Geralt. Oh, come on, let the wee lassie stay. You know, she's been crying. Um, so you can tell she cares for Dandelion quite a lot. Zolt Zoltan starts to get into this, what seems to be going to be a dirty rhyme yeah. or limerick. And I could not make out. I didn't know if he was going to say penis or pecker. Yeah. So he says, never fear, my dear. You'll get your warbler back. Just hope he's got his pup. Gotta watch the rhymes in the presence of the lady. So I didn't know. I thought it was going to rhyme with back. Yeah, but nothing. So I don't know why. Yeah. But with the P, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what it was. Again, Zoltan's probably not the best bard, <laughs> rhymer, warbler, yeah. or as he called it. So, but yeah, it's just, come on, Zoltan. You don't got to hold back. I'm sure I Priscilla know. has heard everything given mm -hmm. her line of work. She's I'm heard sure much she's worse than what she's seen worse. Had. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that I think about it, maybe not. Zoltan and his band of dwarves, I can imagine, is the watched in body as it gets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we let uh, we let Priscilla stay and she challenges you to a game of Gwent because we've got a wee while to wait. And, you know, depending on if you're doing a Gwent playthrough, non-Gwent playthrough, uh, she's not very pleased when you beat her. She's kind of huffy, actually, which I find really funny. <laughs> do you remember what she says? Not exactly, do you? She, she, she goes, this was a stupid idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it was your idea, but it was, think... it was delivered so great. Yeah. And she's... did you, did you find out what card you get when you win this? No, I, do you know what? Okay. I'm annoyed at myself because I remember when I was getting ready for today, I remember thinking I need to figure out what card she gets. Do you know which one it is? I tried looking it up and most of the things I found were people saying I didn't get a card that oh. they won and they didn't get a card. And then I kept looking up all these different things. When I said I kept looking up. I did about 45 seconds of looking up and I was like, okay, I'm, <laughs> enough of this. Like, if I can't Google it that easy, I'm not going to do it. I couldn't get a like definitive answer on this is the card you get. But I mean, it was a dozen people just yeah. saying like, I didn't get a card when I beat her. So I don't know. I definitely did not do that my first playthrough. Yeah, I didn't. I would have done it the second one though. Cause that's when I did my Gwent playthrough. But again, that was six years ago. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe because we get interrupted at the end of the game, they didn't have time to exchange cards. That would be my guess. Yeah, unless it just comes. Oh, maybe that is it. Because even the playthrough uh, that we watched, it didn't yeah. didn't. Maybe it popped up and I just didn't see it too quick. Yeah, because usually you just get a little alert on the screen. Don't yeah, you saying that's true. Card acquired or whatever. Uh, so if anybody knows, that would be a great comment down below with <laughs> the hey. card you get. <laughs> We're YouTubers now. Uh, so one of Zoltan's boys warns us uh, that the convoy is approaching. Um, so we get into a bit of a cutscene here where a tree is knocked down to block the path of the oncom oncoming horses and wagon. And almost immediately we hear a cry for help and turn to see Dandelion being taken away on the back of a horse. And I, I, do we, have we seen Dandelion before this in like a dream or anything? Yeah, we saw him in the, the, like the swallow. Dream. Remember yeah. the, that swallow there and... Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Why am I drawing? Why am I drawing a blank on this? This is the problem, though, when we when we do this in order and then we go back. Yeah. And then we play through it back again. It does come up because I know we saw him with the on Neuromancer. Yes. When the swallow and we knew that's where to go to the Rosemary in time. Mm -hmm. But I swear. No, that was the first that might have been the only that might have been the first time we did. I think so, too. Because I remember when, when you turn around and see him being taken away on this horse, you don't see him that much, but you can see this bright purple outfit. And that's how you, I kind of knew, oh, that's him. Um, his, his outfit is just outrageous. I know. <laughs> and the hat. And it's just so good. And also, okay, we're kind of, well, we can just jump, I guess, to where we get to him. Because yeah. we just do, what do we just do? The horse ride, the chase, and yeah. So the, you basically just follow many different uh, clues to get to him. There's an optional one where you can try and find his Pegasus signet ring, um, but all of this is optional, and you kind of eventually just come to a an isolated hut where three halflings are standing outside, and they tell you that an intruder's burst into their home, and Geralt's kind of deducts that one of them was dandelion because they describe him as jabbering the whole time he was being <laughs> he was being walked in 
so we convinced them to give us a key to the secret underground entrance to their home, which everyone should have. As you're what? walking, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, we don't have, do you have basements? No, not typically. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, there's definitely no basements in Texas. I'm always jealous of people that have basements or really? cellars. Why? Oh, I don't know. Fun stuff you could do there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Activities. People here are more likely to have like an um, attic conversion than a basement. Oh, yeah. You can't have, we have attics here, but you have to convert the central air into it because it's probably about 130 degrees. Yeah, it would there be right horrible. Now. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, we did, we haven't spoken about the weather in a wee while, but we are in the midst of a heat wave here in England. And I know it's not to you, but it's been like 25 degrees here, which is pretty wild and then my house the is so hot like i can't i haven't turned on my heating in my house for months and it just i don't know where the heat's coming from and it won't leave even if i have the windows open it's just like boiling hot up here so i need to find some new way to sleep because i can't cope that's because y'all's homes are designed to keep heat in because it's yeah. always so cold right yeah yeah exactly so everything's thick with insulation and um yeah, that's exactly why. So, and we nobody has well, nobody I know would have air conditioning in their house either. What do you know? What the temperature is inside your your place? Inside, because oh. our air conditioner has been out. Or it was out the last oh, couple yeah, of days. You it, were saying... it got back on, but it got up to about eighty five degrees in the house. And what's that like, in Celsius? Do we know? We we uh, should know how to convert this straight away now. Probably like twenty two. Yeah, that's pretty hot inside, isn't it? I don't know yeah. how hot it is in here. I'm going to have to get a weed um, thermometer. Okay, because the, yeah, this is dreadful. And again, yes, it's the houses are designed differently. But mm -hmm. I think I'm pretty sure the whole northern hemisphere is at least in some kind of heat wave. Because yeah. it's actually next week, it's actually going to get up to Celsius like past 40 or Gosh. Fahrenheit, like 105. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a stay stay indoors weather stay indoors yeah absolutely i'm going away on holiday next week and uh apparently it's going to be 40 degrees there and i just i don't know if i even want to go <laughs> i'm just well, not going to be able to do it but hopefully there they have air conditioning so wear sunscreen wear sunscreen always yes uh where did i get to ah so we're going through the secret passage into this uh house and we can hear dandelion bargaining with the guard saying you know my corpse is worth nothing to you whereas alive I'm worth a hundred gold ingots. Um, and it seems like they're kind of, I don't know if you listen to the full conversation, but it does seem like the guard is coming around to the idea or he's, he's, he's not completely shutting it down anyway. It's either that or yeah, you're right. He's not shutting it down. I don't know if he's humoring him yeah. or if he's just getting so annoyed, he just wants him to shut up, which mm -hmm. I think is mainly probably more Those, likely <laughs> yeah, around dandelion that that's kind of the normal reaction mm -hmm. yeah so we burst in um kill the witch hunter and free dandelion who is not best pleased with us and whilst you're fighting the guard i thought this was really funny you can kind of hear dandelion going like like because he's still got the um the tie around his mouth um we set him free and he's kind of like i had him right where i wanted him Geralt, you know Typical dandelion overplaying everything that he does. Um, yeah, and dandelion does not ever shut up, as mentioned yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he has been in both of the games. It, Julian, Alfred, Pancrantz, Viscount de Letno. And take a, do you know how old he is? If not, take a guess at how old do you think he is? Well, in the game, I kind of thought he would maybe be in his 30s. He's 43. Oh. I know. Hmm. Yeah, Dandelion is 43, and that kind of tails with it, you know, towards the books. And that DJ quote that we talked about in the past that it's so famous, it was so famous, I forgot it. It's <laughs> uh, Dijkstra says about him, I know you're almost 40, look almost 30, think you're just over 20, <laughs> and act as though you're barely 10. <laughs> and close. that was, I think that man, it might have been one of the first things that Dijkstra actually says in the books. It's one of those. And it's just a great introduction to both of those characters. Yeah. Because that sums up Dandelion perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I tried to figure that out in the, in the Netflix series as well. Cause you remember in the Netflix series one, the time. there's a lot of timelines. And yeah. I was kind of like, he looks the same, but then Jennifer makes a comment like, oh, your crow's feet are new. So that was kind of her hinting at he's getting old or growing older. Um, but yeah, it was, I 
looking back at the first series now, he does look a lot younger in the first series than in the second series. They've kind of let his hair grow out and stuff. And um, but yeah, it was a little bit of a mystery to me, definitely. Yeah, that was supposed to be that was one of the things that threw people off with yeah. the time jumps and to be like, wait, Dandelion looks exactly the same. But this is supposed to be like 20, like 30 years or something like that because of how they fiddled yeah. with the different short stories. I think that was one of those things that kind of just slipped through the cracks. Definitely. And it just was like, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it doesn't really matter. So no, it doesn't. You no, know, our bad. One of those things. Yeah. Um, so Priscilla and Zoltan arrive and per Priscilla, you know, she's been so worried about him and he's just kind of like, what are you doing here? And she seems annoyed by him almost immediately. Um, but we have a sit down and start asking Dandelion about his adventures with Siri. And worryingly, he kind of says that he doesn't know where she is. And he thought that we would know where she was. Um, and he says that the last time he saw her, they were on Temple Isle running away from Horson's men. And this is where we head over into Siri's story, Breakneck Speed. So Siri's story here, when I replayed this, I forgot that you just have to run by everybody. Like you can just run by everybody. And I just kept killing everyone thinking, yeah. oh, I have to kill them. And they just kept coming. Yeah. They just kept coming. And I looked up and it's like, oh, we just have to escape. We just yeah. have to run. I always do this. And especially on the Siri quests, which there's not that many of. There was another one where you're running through the swamp. Um, the swamp, or the yeah. bog in Velen, where I was like fighting all these monsters, and then it's literally yeah. all you've got to do is run to the other side of this swamp, and that's it over. Um, but yeah, this is the same thing. Uh, you grab a horse and flee with Dandelion, and we eventually reach the gates of the great temple of the eternal fire. And this is where we get a pretty cool cutscene. It seems that um, every time we play a Siri, her powers are getting more and more dramatic. And in this scene, she kind of shoes Dandelion away and takes on several guards with her sword and then fist fight. And then eventually she's kind of overwhelmed and she teleports away as a crossbow is fi fired at her. And I noticed in this moment that Dandelion was running to her as she was being shot. Um, and I don't know if he was going to jump in front of her and take the bolts or if he was going to push her out of the way. And then I was thinking, is this actually what happened? Or is this what Dandelion is telling us happened? Oh, that is brilliant. Because we all I, know Dandelion yes. likes to big things up and, you know, glamorize the stories. So that's when I was thinking, did he actually do that? Or is he just making a story out of this? But I don't I know. I never, yes, I never thought about that. But if there ever was an unreliable narrator, it is Dandelion. <laughs> and now, yes, I, that's I'm going to go with what you just said right there. That's exactly what there's no way. Cause, cause it is very, it's not out of character for Dandelion to care about like friends mm -hmm. and all that. And I do believe he absolutely cares about Siri, Yeah. but yes, it is. He's running away. He looks back and she's there and yeah, he goes back. And at first, when I first played, I thought he's about to dive in front yeah. of this, it's but now yeah, I think, slow motion I think he's just embellishing for his next uh, ballad. Yeah, possibly. Uh, and it ends with, Dandelion being surrounded and taken prisoner. Um, so I have, I have on my notes about this. Yeah. Siri, Siri almost gets dobbied. Dobbied. Oh. And that would be yeah. a spoiler for Deathly Hollows Part One, the end of yeah. Deathly Hollows Part One. When oh. Dobby goes through and Bellatrix throws the knife. That's exactly right what through it's the like. Portal. And yeah. I saw that and I'm like, okay, she's, I said she almost gets Dobby because she obviously doesn't get hit, but she's yeah. like, yeah, I wonder, I wonder if that kind of played through into their minds of Dobby. Oh, oh. Now everybody's sad. I'm sorry. Yeah. God, that is still heartbreaking to this day. <laughs> um, it's a brutal, that is a brutal, brutal scene. And I was is. actually talking with somebody, like some random person who they're like he was reading at night every night he was reading um harry potter to his kid like his mm. she might have been maybe like eight like eight-year-old girl maybe 10 somewhere like that and they were in a half-blood prince okay and they're saying like oh you know it's kind of things you have to explain i'm like yeah you have to explain the ending of that book <laughs> <laughs> and he's like yeah yeah and the little girl was just kind of like what happened i'm like whoop 
I'm like, that's Spoilers. your parents' problem to tell you there. And I was like, then there's going to be another big one. Too. Well, there's going to be several, but there's going to be another big one in Deathly Hollows that's uh, you got to explain to that crying child. Yeah, on towards why the end, people die. Yeah, because towards the end of those books, there is a lot of there's a lot of people dying. I mean, I yeah, they make it I mean, I, I say that as if I read the books. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, only, it's um, seen the films. Yeah, it's very Witcher esque. Yeah, yeah. Into the Witcher books, maybe. Great for kids. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's the end of the Siri portion of the quest. And we are back with Dandelion. And he's describing this quite traumatic ordeal as such an adventure. And <laughs> Priscilla sounds sick of him already. And he's just going on about how he's got so much material for his ballads. And Priscilla kind of walks off. She's sick of him. And Geralt has a little dig at Dandelion here. And he seems quite annoyed, Geralt. He's saying, you're getting more and more selfish with your age. Um, and he's just not not very happy with Dandelion. Obviously, he's stressed. He's went through this whole ordeal to get back to Dandelion. And he's not really getting anything from it. You can pick some different things. And one of them just kind of calls Dandelion out about only caring about the ballads and yeah. only caring about that. But Dandelion says the most truthful thing about it. He's like, why would I worry about Siri? Like yeah. she can take care of herself and even tells Geralt, hey, this isn't the little girl from Kaer Morin. Yeah. And that's a big thing to hit on with the player choosing Geralt's decisions of, mm -hmm. hey, this is an adult. She's more powerful than any of us. And the fact that Dandelion isn't even worried speaks volumes like what he yeah. thinks about her now. This was my line of the episode as well. And it reminded me so much of, in one of the final seasons of Game of Thrones, um, when everyone is coming to King's Landing to speak with Cersei, and there's a moment where the Hound and Brienne meet up, and the Hound goes, well, where the fuck is Arya? If you're here, who's protecting Arya? And she goes, the only one that needs protecting is the man that stands in her way. And I thought... And like, there's that little moment where the hound is so proud of her. And I was like, that's what it reminded me of, of like, you don't need to worry about this little girl anymore. Like she's fine. <laughs> yeah. The little girl done growed up. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a little bit more talking here and we kind of find out what this phylactery is all about. And I had kind of forgotten about this little box and Geralt just pulls it out of his back pocket as he does. Um, and Dandelion explains that he took Siri to Horson with the phylactery because it was broken. And Horson is the one who had the access to the mages who could fix it. Um, and it's revealed that Siri was looking for help deciphering or lifting a curse. And he recites it in Elven. Do you want to have a go at it? Uh, the first part, <laughs> Vafael Elaine, mm -hmm. uh, that is basically goodbye beauty, you know, farewell oh. beauty. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a very common Elven, what do you call it, a farewell saying? Yeah. Not a greetings. What's the opposite of a greeting? I don't know. It's not a salutations. Uh, I guess a farewell. I, a farewell. Yeah. A sign a, off. So, there you go. God, yeah. am, I even, am I trying to think of a word that doesn't exist? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But well, yeah, Raphael, Elaine, Kedmel, Foley, Gladivy, Dorn, Eptainid, Brundro, Ik, Iakis. Perfect. And exactly. neither Geralt or Dandelion <laughs> can make sense of it at all. Um, but it's what Siri had been reciting over and over. And it's the curse that she needs help with lifting. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Dandelion, Priscilla and Zoltan head back to the Rosemary and Time and does that classic quest thing of, hey, you should come visit me sometime. Um, and yeah. optionally, we can go and speak to the halflings again and they will give you a gift. And it's a portrait of Mr. Hemelfart, the Hierarch of Novigrad, who I think we've heard mentioned a few times in previous quests. And this is one of my... <laughs> I love when Geralt gets given things like this and it's like a big portrait and he's like, thanks, puts it in his back pocket. <laughs> Yeah, it just puts it back like, oh, okay. He's got a, what was that? The D&D the &D bag of holding yeah. or whatever it is that you can put everything in. I guess Geralt has that. Yeah. And it reminded me of, um, did you watch like Top Gear back in the day when it was I Clarks did. and Hammond and yes. May? Yeah. Like one of their favorite things was like, my favorite things of theirs was when they did like the Christmas specials and they went on their big adventures together. And like one of the traditions that they always did was 
buying each other just ridiculously awkward gifts so like do you remember the vietnam special where they were on the bikes and they bought each other like um you know like a massive model of a ship with sails and then they got james may the statue and they just have to carry it around and i always think of that whenever they give Geralt something ridiculous that he just has to like put on the back of roach they always seem to give James May the most awkward, annoying thing. Mm-hmm. And really heavy as well. They're like, he likes fancy stuff, so we'll get him this <laughs> giant rock statue. <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. Old school Top Gear. My that absolute favorite. My absolute favorite. Those specials. Yeah, I need to rewatch some of those specials. They again. still hold up. Like, they're still so Do good. They? Yeah. When I went okay, to they're... Vietnam, I went and I followed, like, part oh. of the route they did as well, which was just, like, one of the best things I've ever done. The Vietnam one was great. Yeah. I'm trying to think. The, the Bolivia one was good. Mm-hmm. The India one, not so much. Yeah, that was when they like uh, were trying to do like a a peace, not peace mission, but they were trying to do things to help them out. So they were like transporting their lunches and stuff over India, weren't they? Yeah. Well, it seemed it seemed the most. If I was ever gonna say mean spirited. I would say yeah. the India one more than the, they seem to be actually be respectful of other places. They were mm-hmm. not to no. be respectful of India. Nope. And so that was a little bit, the Argentina one was bad too. Cause that's where they got banned and almost got, they got chased out of the country. They did. Yeah. That was, yeah. wasn't that all over that like ended a, the show. Did it? I think that's I think what that they got the in so much did, trouble there. I think they got in so much trouble there that Clarkson and like executive producer finally had like their fight. Mm. And I think that ended the show. Um, yeah wasn't it all over like a registration play or something it had some, some yeah they specific mentioned year the, or something you probably know the Falklands the yeah. Falkland war yeah. yeah which is just which again that goes back to where it's like a mean-spirited thing where they yeah. punch down as opposed to doing other things which they seem to do which Jeremy Clarkson's an asshole like oh, yeah. completely straight up mm-hmm. and like I, that's just kind of when you watch it every like okay he's not just trying to do that he's a, he's a jerk sometimes he goes too far yeah <laughs> yeah he's, he's just an ass he has a new show now um called clarkson's farm have you seen that one nope he seems a lot more kind natured now he's still like his usual sarcastic you know oafish okay. self but he's bought a farm and he's basically like learning how to run a farm and it's a little bit more wholesome and not yeah. quite as nasty in, in points um so we can keep this a portrait of Hemelfart, and it can be gifted to Dandelion to hang up in the Rosemary and Time, or it can be kept to decorate another property much later in the game. All right, so now that is it for the Novigrad main story. So it's off to Skellige, right? Well, we do have some side quests to cover first, but Skellige is up next. We might have several episodes oh, yeah. over these side quests because off the top of my head without even looking into it cabaret is one we have to do because that's mm-hmm. the crimson avenger <laughs> the carnal sins which is csi when we're tracking yeah. down the vampire oh god and then yeah. obviously the tris masquerade oh there's like so much three. i can't believe like i was so shocked when i thought this is the end of the main quest and everything else is optional like uh there's there's so much more to do in novigrad um before moving on to skellige as, as, as excited as i am to move on to skellige there's a lot more to discover in Novigrad first. Yeah, so that'll that that'll take. A, whoops, <laughs> so we can't edit that out. <laughs> so that'll take a couple episodes there. But that is gonna do it for today's episode. You can find us on Twitter at Witcher Podcast, email at Witcher Pod or Witcher Pod at gmail.com, Instagram at Witcher Pod. We will also link Lucy's Discord below. There's a channel in there to specifically talk about the podcast in which we can put behind the scenes tidbits which i did last week which explains why we only cut one thing from last episode usually we keep most everything in but i did cut one thing from last episode because of different timelines and quote facts it could kind of be right uh, right or wrong so go there to check out what that was lucy where can people find you I am Lucy J. Robin on pretty much everything. You'll mainly find me on Twitch a few days a week and then on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, all the days in between. All right. And now it's time for the Lucy Elden Ring update. Oh, God. Still that struggling good, huh? away. God. Do you know what? I love the game. I feel like every time you ask me about it, I'm like, God, oh, I hate it so much. I don't. I love it. Um, but I'm, I'm like probably about halfway through the main story. 
Um, I think I've got a lot left to do and I'm loving it. So it's good. All right. It's just a slog. It's one of those, yeah, it I is, hate that yeah. game so much. I can't wait to play it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you can find me on Twitter at the Fox Bride Four on Twitch at the Fox Bride, and as previously mentioned, join us next time as we head back to the free city of Novigrad to do I don't know seventeen, eighteen side quests. Woo-hoo. 